welcome to our live webinar this morning. I am Dr. Sherry Kelly. I'm a clinical psychologist and clinical neuropsychologist from West Hartford, Connecticut. I am also the co-chair of the Child and Family Committee of the Connecticut Psychological Association. In addition, I've had the great honor over the past year to have been working with two of our panelists today, Dr. Viktor Vost from Ukraine and Dr. Abraham Gerard Meyer from Israel. I'm really excited about this opportunity that we have today to speak to two leading psychologists in Ukraine and also to Dr. Meyer, whose efforts in coordinating supportive care for this crisis have been, in my opinion, unmatched in many ways. So I want to welcome you all. We're going to start with our introductions, and we have an opportunity to find out what some of the programs have been created in Ukraine right now, how we've coordinated care with our colleagues in Ukraine, what the needs are in Ukraine at this time, and to gain a perspective from those actually working on the ground in Ukraine, as well as the perspective of someone like Dr. Meyer, who is working very passionately on the coordination efforts of getting supportive services to Ukraine and also supporting people virtually through this entire crisis. So I would like to introduce you to our panelists today. I am going to start by, inter by introducing Dr. Um, Val Valeria Polly. I hope I pronounced that right. It's a beautiful name. Um, Dr. Polly is the president of the National Psychological Association of Ukraine. So she has many things to tell us. She's also a researcher who has research assessment something close to my heart also, and she is also in private practice. I would also like to introduce our friend and colleague, Dr. Victor Vos. And Dr. Vos has been very involved in, in the coordination of support through the Mental Wellness Society. Dr. Vos is also a, a member of the, of the National Psychological Association of Ukraine. And then last but not least, I want to introduce my friend and colleague, Dr. Abraham Gerard Meyer. He is the founder and CEO of the Mental Wellness Society International. And also, I just want to share that Dr. Meyer is an esteemed researcher in the field of stress and stress response. So I'm going to kick it off right now with asking Dr. Meyer to start us with just an explanation of how you became involved with Ukraine, how the Mental Wellness Society is working with our psychologists on the panel today. Dr. Meyer? Thank you, Dr. Kelly. My background is uh, I have uh, two PhDs, one in psychology, one in physiology. And uh, that make me particularly focusing on something called the tunnel vision effect, which is a, physi a psychological response to a physiological, I'm sorry, a physiological response to a psychological stress. Uh, and at that moment, you see only a little part of what you see you have a limited vision, but not just the field of vision, also the vision uh, of what you can, your cognitive vision, what you can think, what you can uh, imagine, and you focus on the problem, and you end up to react in the flight, fight, freeze uh, response for all mammalian that we are as well. So this is something I've been studying when I was at Carnegie Mellon University. And uh, it, I continue after that, and we developed it in an activity. Uh, but throughout the years, we realized that we needed to be with our colleague because us, one group, one, one person, one group, 
we we are not it's not like one size fits all because human as you know it's very individual uh, the anything related to human but the more we are with different tool and it's like a painter a painter a plumber a roofer are still in construction but they don't use the same tool and the idea was to create the mental wellness society which is a, a global toolbox where we handpick different specialists in the mental wellness society. So it's a handpicked professional international network of science academy practitioners to improve functionality by enhancing cognition on wellness. And here we say wellness because it's not mental health, only mental health, because in this endeavor, uh, the relation between the mind and the body is very important. An holistic approach help to remove yourself of the tunnel vision effect or to prevent yourself to be in that situation. So that's what we have done. And we have over 240 members in 72 countries. Uh, that was a slide before. Uh, and uh, in 72 countries, and we have four groups. Each group is for between 40 and uh, 80 members. Health and wellness professional, agent of change. It's really our professional uh, psychology, industrial psychology, uh, and uh, everything for, to improve organization, but also education on parenting on psychologists, life coach, social worker, therapist, professional. It's four different groups. And already there, you can see that you have four different trades, which are all involved in psychology and which can all help uh, one each other. So we have created uh, uh, a network for communication. It's called the Mental Wellness Society Global Community. And we have developed that tool to communicate with one each other. And we particularly developed the organization when came the COVID, because we realized when came COVID that it was uh, a crisis at, at, the, at the scale of the planetary. Yes. But it's the same when you have a crisis at the scale of a complete country, and we can even say the whole world is concerned uh, with the war in Ukraine and the aggression of uh, uh, Russia uh, in Ukraine. So when that happened, we contacted one of our members, Victor Vus, and we said, Victor, uh, how can we help you? You are a member of the organization. You are the coordinator of the Mental Wellness Society for Ukraine. How can, you, how can we help you? And uh, then uh, Victor made a list and said, why don't we start? We decided to create a task force. It's a psychology support in Ukraine. And that task force moved very well because we have 192 members, which are all professional who want to help in Ukraine. On the task force, we also created a library and the library have a library in English and the library in Ukrainian. At the beginning, we were thinking maybe we can do it in Russian, but no, we have to do everything we do with Ukraine have to be uh, in Ukrainian. Eventually in English, if our Ukrainian colleagues are doing the translation uh, and, and that's something which uh, is happening. Thank you, Valeria. So, we have also created some video in Ukrainian, and we explain in that video how to prevent the effect of stress, how to prevent a bad sleep under the bombarding in a very uh, uncomfortable shelter. But you still need to do some movement. You still need to do a certain number of things to prevent the stress and to help your body to cope with that stress. So we have developed uh, six videos of two minutes each, and uh, we are sharing it 
with our friend. In fact, uh, Victor is giving access on distributing yeah. it. And Victor, Victor, I wanted to know if right now, because I'm looking at our, our schedule and our time, and I wanted to know if, um, if you could perchance, you know, talk a little bit about your work. And I know that we, that Dr. Meyer has sent you um, these videos that have been done on movement, on stress, on breathing and biofeedback. We've done also, Dr. Meyer, we've done um, videos training um, refugees, training care workers and training parents and children who are right there in Ukraine right now, correct? Yes. We, we have uh, we have this video and uh, we share it this in information uh, via uh, our e electronic resources and at the same time we cooperate with Israel Trauma Coalition and the Israel we, Trauma Coalition. Okay. Yeah, and we use this materials in training for professionals too. Okay, so just a second, Victor, hang on, because I want Dr. Meyer to explain a little bit about the coordination with the Israel Trauma Coalition, because they're very well connected. So the next slide is uh, about the type of event that you mentioned that we are doing, training seminar uh, that we are doing for Ukrainians in Ukrainian. Uh, so we have done different of those uh, seminars. Uh, four of them, and uh, in general, there is between three and 500 participants, something like that. And then uh, we have been able to make a partnership with different organizations. And uh, the first one is uh, Israel Trauma Coalition. They have been for 50 years, because Israel is, is still a country under bombing every day or terrorism. Uh, and they have been helping community for preparedness. And also they are helping with, all, they are an NGO. They are cooperating with the World Health Organization. They are cooperating with the United Nations. And they, we partner together and they supply us some training that Victor have benefited on his colleague too, but also uh, different uh, guidelines and we work together on different projects. We have now the National Psychological Association of Ukraine that uh, we are now making a partnership together with uh, our friend uh, here who are present. And uh, we have, in fact, we realize that we cannot go directly to the public but it's better to go through professional. And the, so we go through Israel Trauma Coalition in Romania, uh, Georgia, uh, Poland with the, in the refugee camp. And we are working with the National Psychological Association in Ukraine. And one of the big developments we have is we have been able to work with a technology company from Berlin where you have a, your phone and on, an Android for now, but in a, a month, it will be also for uh, Apple. You put your finger in the back and it will give you your blood pressure, your uh, oxygen level. It will tell you everything you need to know to prevent you to enter in high stress. And eventually to tell you, you need to do this breathing. You need to do that movement. Uh, you need to do something because you are entering eventually in high stress and eventually burnout. So that's an app we have with Kenku. It will be free for all the people working with us in Ukraine, in America, outside Ukraine, and it will go through our partnering uh, association on, 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 on members. But this, we, we are planning to have millions of that app to made available. So before using the app, the people need to be trained and understand how to use it. So the professional in Ukraine and the ITC are training the people to do that. And of course, we cooperate with the Mental Health Global Challenge uh, Organization of Victor. Yes. So what do we do for them? So what, what do we do for them is important. 
What we do for them also is we realize that in order to, we needed more volunteers than just our professional volunteer. So we are working on making connection <coughs> with Ukrainians in America. And this wow. initiative is Feel Care. So there is 1 million of Ukrainians in America. There is 20 million of Ukrainian abroad, not in Ukraine. But we are starting with a model in the city of Lincoln, Nebraska, where our partner Scott Duncan, <laughs> Dr. Gantin, has found 1,500 volunteers in uh, Lincoln who are ready to help one-on-one -on -one people in Ukraine through WhatsApp or uh, Telegram. But we need to train them because if we don't train them, they can be completely drained by the traumatic uh, information on, on experience they will have because they can get, they can end up to have uh, what we call the precarious stress on trauma. So we train them before. And actually we have a team going of Ukrainian, American Ukrainians going next week to the camp in Poland. And oh, again, we are training them with all, all the uh, directive and guidelines which are established with ITC. Plus something we do specifically for them, we train them in a method we have developed, uh, which is a four-step process. And the four-step process is to recognize the situation, what's happening, to be aware of what you can do to get to your destination or to your goal. In the case of Ukraine, your goal is to survive. And one day by day, by day to think about one day it will stop and you won't survive that. And if you start to think about what you miss or the problem there is, you start to go the down spiral. And then step two is to make a choice. What do you need to do to fulfill uh, what you need to do to prevent not to enter internal vision effect. And then you self-evaluate yourself or with a professional who help you to, to learn to make self-evaluation. But it's not an evaluation of you. It's an evaluation of how the process went uh, because you want to improve the process. It's not about people. It works very well. It's a very good patch to help people in situation of crisis. We implemented that uh, for uh, the first responder on hotline responder uh, who are definitely on the phone helping people on, on having TV and eventually committing suicide. Oh. Uh, so we, we are using the same concept of okay. field care with that method. So that, that's what we do in a nutshell, plus many other initiatives we try to do, but uh, uh, in a nutshell, that's what we do. So, so uh, that's, that's- So you're training, you're, you're, not, you're coordinating caregivers and you're also training many of the caregivers. And I wanna talk right now, thank you, Dr. No, Meyer. We're training I, professional or non-professional. You're training professional very big and non-professionals. Yeah. Yes, at the same time. And I want to ask our panelists right now, because this is about survival and it's been a very long two months. I want to ask first, um, Dr. Polly, how are you coping? Um, not only as a professional, but you know, a, a, as a woman right now, as an individual going through this, this trauma. Thank you, Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Sherry. Uh, but first of all, I want to say thank you for the invitation, and I'm so pleased to spend my evening with you today. Um, thank you very much. Um, what about my coping? Um, it's a very interesting uh, question, and uh, I have uh, I was thinking of it uh, for many times. Um, I live and work in Kiev, uh, and at the beginning of the sad February event, I moved to uh, the suburbs of the city, but then after two weeks, 
I quickly returned to my home. Um, we Ukrainians uh, decided and believed that uh, the walls of our home uh, help us to, uh, to cope with different problems. And I think that uh, my, my home, my flat is a huge resource uh, for me. Uh, I follow a daily routine. Um, I dress like a job every day. I take care of myself and uh, do my hair, uh, do makeup, um, even if I'm just going to visit a bomb shelter. It's very important for me. I fall asleep and try to do crossfit every day, uh, if it's possible. Um, I read news very carefully. Um, I try not to read them all the time because it's a very common uh, problem for Ukrainian nowadays. I focus on the good news, um, maybe good results and achievements of our army, um, as you know, Russian sanctions, uh, or uh, maybe other positive stories about our citizens, about their rescue, um, or recovery. Um, now I'm trying to joke about Russian sanctions, but I think that a good sense of humor is a very good resource in difficult times. And um, I think that all this stuff like a daily routine, physical activity, sense of humor, um, good sleep, um, it's a very important frame. And without this frame, it would be very difficult uh, to cope with the stress. Uh, and they know how it was because we had, I had a very difficult first two or three days um after the russian invasion um i remember that it was like a one huge long day uh without the beginning or ending full of fear anxiety and uh, those day i realized that um that the the the, the biggest resource for me is my work um, and uh, um, what um, I know for sure that my best coping is to plan uh, for my future. And my colleague from the National Psychological Association uh, in Ukraine and I began to anticipate a few steps ahead. And we prepared the material for citizens and for psychologists. We are uh, started to looking for lectures and trainers on topics, um, uh, important topics for us. Uh, we are uh, we started looking for uh, grant funding for our initiatives, and uh, honestly, um, my work gave me a special meaning uh, in that day, and um, it was and it is uh, my way of fighting um, and uh, my colleagues uh, from the National Psychological Association have already done a lot and we have a great plan for future and um, I know that uh, my work my job is a huge resource for me to um, to avoid uh, despair maybe um, my work distracts me from uh, bad news, uh, from bad events, and uh, it put all my experiences and feelings, like an aggression, in a very constructive uh, direction. So I think that we, as a psychologist, uh, are very lucky and um, mm, Lucky, lucky and happy people because we will never have the opportunity to say that uh, our work is unimportant or meaningless. So my coping is my profession and my plan for the future and maybe the way how I can help and empower our community. That's really beautiful. Thank you. That's... I. 
I'm almost speechless from this, Valeria. It's beautiful. I, as president of the of the association, I wanted to ask you also. I I hear that the vast majority of psychologists have remained in Ukraine. Is this true? The majority. What? Sorry. The, ma the majority of psychologists have stayed in Ukraine. To help. Um, yes, yes, we uh, stay in Ukraine, but some of them, unfortunately, now are refugees in European country, but uh, the majority uh, stay in Ukraine. Thank you. We're going to get back to you. I want to now just move to um, Dr. Victor Vost and ask Victor how you've been coping. I've been talking to you several times a week. So I know a little bit about how you're coping um, because you've moved around. And so I want you to share your story about how you're coping, how you're helping your family cope too. Yeah, can, kindly thanks for uh, this possibility to, to share my experience. Uh, I have illustrated the story uh, and nar narrative of Dr. Valeria uh, with my case uh, with, with, with I have with some uh, patient regarding how to make up and design it uh, own look if, if, even if before going to the shelter <laughs> even if you understand so life must go on yeah and uh, regarding my message uh, I have um, some uh, some make differences with uh, Dr. Val Val Valeria Prut. So uh, my uh, my method, physical activities. When I have some uh, burnout in my uh, brain, I try to do some physical exercises. It's extremely good uh, for uh, my health. It's uh, enough to create um, other dominant in my brain uh, and to turn on uh, this uh, stress. Uh, second, um, according to the recommendation of Dr. Abraham and you, I am doing uh, breathing exercises. I try to uh, to to do different uh, systems of breathing, not only one, because uh, if you do something one, you can adopt this is very quickly and it not uh, helpful. Uh, then. Uh, so physical exercises, uh, this breathing and the main resource for me is eyes of people when I help them. Uh, when, for example, I see uh, mother with children, mother is in the state of acute stress uh, reaction, uh, children is crying. And when I uh, made this crisis intervention and support them, I see getting warm on her uh, face. I see smile on the face of uh, children. It's a huge resource for me when uh, it's, it means that I am able, I can, I do, and I am doing this. So it's it's very important, not only in social plan, but only in on my psych psychological. So I am uh, I am able, I can do this. I have abilities. I have a professional statement. I am doing this, and I see reaction. I see results, quick results of my crisis in intervention. It's uh, it's really good uh, good resource, and such a resource, of course, is work. When I continue to work, when uh, so, it's like disaster, yeah, disaster, uh, dis or aster. Yeah, you are uh, before your choice, or you will uh, fall in stress, or you will uh, fall in success. Yeah, you should to uh, should to arrive at this decision. And uh, regarding other activities that help me, uh, 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 we um, organize platform with e resources and materials, tutorials for professionals and volunteers within my website. Uh, and uh, commonly with Dr. Abraham and you, uh, and you, Dr. Shelley, we organize international media channel um, uh, with interviews and updates regarding the situation with, with mental health of population in Ukraine. It's all, it's 
not only helpful for us, it's helpful for Ukraine generally. Why? Because we attract attention of people to the uh, problems, to the issues in Ukraine, and somebody help uh, us. So I, uh, I strongly believe that this our discussion, this our webinars, like, like, like this webinars, is this will help uh, to save uh, souls, to save months, and to save lives of some U U Ukrainians who are struggling U in Ukraine or abroad, because many people hear this, uh, uh, looking to this, and they would say, this will allow to catch an eye of global society to our problem and to engage so support for these people. Oh. Uh, at the same time, uh, we uh, organize discussion club with, with you, with Dr. Abraham. Uh, this di discussion club, it's uh, in order to, um, to uh, it's discussion between international professionals and Ukrainian professions. Yeah. This allowed to connect uh, these differences in point of view, differences in uh, professional approach, and uh, we, uh, this allowed to um, contribute a Ukrainian experience into the global mental health. It's uh, because we, we are meeting this new sit situation. All uh, methods uh, we developed previously, it's not work uh, correctly right now, according to the masses of people. For example, in the Lviv terminal, in the, uh, in, in the beginning of this uh, situation. So, so I just wanted to say, because I don't have people, you were living for several weeks in a train station in Lviv, in the west of Ukraine, helping refugees. That's the Lviv terminal. Yeah, uh, I could be happy, uh, professionally happy, not like human, but like professional, uh, yes. because uh, I was uh, starting my activity with uh, hotline, hotline even in the district, not mm -hmm. in national hotline, but in our district. I volunteer, I provide training for volunteers. I was, uh, I took part in the municipal patrol in lo local self-defense so, patrol. So Victor, that's actually something I wanted to ask both of you. I want to talk about this because the things that both you and Dr. Polly are describing are tenants of coping and resilience, which is agency, self-efficacy, optimism, and imagination, creativity, being able to pivot and be creative. I wanted to also bring in Dr. Polly to talk to you uh, and also Victor after, after you, can you please tell us the many different roles that your psychologists are playing in Ukraine right now, all the different roles and responsibilities that psychologists have now in Ukraine? Dr. Polly. Thank you. Uh, but first of all, I want to start um, from a description uh, of some external and internal circumstances, because I think it's very important to understand how our, our psychology work and help people. Uh, and as I mentioned um, before, many of my colleagues are now refugees in uh, Europe, European countries. Some of them are internally displaced uh, persons. Uh, some of them are hidden in the basement in the city, uh, being bombed and shelled, uh, for example, in Kharkiv or in Kyiv, because several times a day we have uh, air red sirens. Um, some of my colleagues are surrendered by the Russian soldiers. Some of them are in temporary occupation. So currently, many of us, many of Ukrainian psychologists adjust to the new reality and we keep working, making our contribution. But the problem is that uh, many of my colleagues, many of Ukrainian psychologists have already gone through horrible experiences. Russian missiles destroyed their homes, killed their relatives. Some colleagues lived under occupation uh, or live under occupation. Um, this, um, I think that um, being refugees or uh, 
temporary displaced person is a hard experience too. And uh, there are many sad events which traumatized our psychologists too. And I hope that most of my colleagues um, have good resilience skills and their previous psychotherapy helped them. As the National Psychological Association, we try to help them and provide uh, free supervision, supervision group and intervision group and uh, training for uh, our community to enhance them and um, give them strength and force uh, to work. Um, and uh, of course, uh, some of um, our colleagues unfortunately don't have ability to work because some of them don't have an emotional resource to work. Some of them uh, don't have uh, a suitable work conditions. It's, a, it's a very difficult because, for example, people who are temporarily displaced um, commonly rent a very small apartment or houses where they live with their grannies, children, cats, dogs, uh, friends. So it's very challenging to find a quiet place with good internet connection, for example. But despite all, um, the majority of our colleagues um, keep working and help our society to recover. Many uh, Ukrainian psychologists are involved in uh, different initiatives such as psychological help for refugees or internally displaced uh, people. Some of them are working on the ground like Victor um, in a railway station or in the places uh, in the shelters uh, with children, with adults. Uh, in Kiev, in Kharkiv, in, in different, different places. Uh, some of them um, working with uh, victims of atrocities um, with, in uh, emergency uh, teams uh, with other specialists like doctors uh, and helpers. Uh, some people uh, give crisis, in, uh, provide crisis interventions for people in a place with active facilities uh, where it's possible. Uh, many of our colleagues work online uh, and they uh, joined uh, different hotlines or organized uh, private initiatives. Um, many people work with the military staff and their relatives. And uh, commonly, it depends on skills and uh, uh, location and your um, condition to work uh, with people. But as Victor mentioned, uh, it's very important for us as the Ukrainians, and it's very important for us as Ukrainian psychologists uh, to help other people because we consider it like in our contribution to victory to um, to our future. And uh, I think that many of my colleagues thought that when they help others uh, a bit, they help uh, themselves. So, um, so our psychologists um, are involved in very, very different initiatives and play a key role in the recovery of our society. Thank you. Thank you. I just want to follow up with the question because you of your position with the, the National Psychological Association. What are you what are you hearing right now from colleagues in the East and the Southeast um, about you know working with people with the atrocities? I also understand from Victor there are many orphans. Um, in Ukraine. Can you talk about that? Uh, thank you. Many of our colleagues from different countries uh, offer help and uh, some of them uh, offer us trainings or lectures. Some of them offer supervisions or uh, other type of help. So 
um, unfortunately, it's a very, uh, it's a new reality for us. We have never come across um, the problem like, uh, like this problem. And uh, um, it's important for our specialists to, um, to be prepared and to be educated to help uh, different people uh, and uh, victims of atrocities um, as well. Okay, and just is your organization working also with the World Health Organization or United Nations? Are they providing help? Um, yeah, we collaborate with different organizations. We, um, for example, we have very strong connection with the American Psychological Association, and we have the Memorandum of Understanding with them. And the APA always help us with all our initiatives. Um, and uh, now they uh, help. Uh, the APA helps us with material and some financial resources. Uh, we also collaborate with the United Nations, uh, UNICEF in some initiatives. Uh, uh, I know that very actively the, US, uh, the USAID uh, is very active uh, in Ukraine and uh, is involved in different mental health um activities and initiatives so we collaborate with different ngo and the governmental initiatives um which uh, want to help our society thank you um dr Voss. one of the things you had sent me a couple weeks ago and i shared with some of our colleagues in connecticut you, you have tracked almost different stages that people went through during this crisis. Can you, can you explain what you saw as a psychologist, the, the various aspects that Ukrainians have gone through, the different stages that they've gone through? I'm gonna ask you to explain that. Apologize, I was... Uh deleted from uh, from zoom okay but, but now i am again here uh, oh. yes uh, uh, i can i have prepared uh, some abstract i have uh, um, written down uh, my experience in some uh, something like abstracts and uh, i have divided the situation here in the uh, four stages and um, i have written about something about in uh, about three stages via chat and now i would like to say about the special four state uh, i called this like diversification of reality what i mean the new general situation within this state uh, could be described in uh, following keywords retreat of russian troops in their north direction liberation of some ukrainian towns and villages uh, release and exit of people from shelters and basements and uh, tortures violence orphans uh, mass casualties among civilian pop pop population and the titles of following ukrainian towns became internationally rec recognized i mean bucha irpin gostomil at the same time, this stage uh, refers to both psychological, socio-psychological processes, changing of traditional values and widening of interpretations, widening of alternative trust and alternative reality. On one side, we are meeting with increasing number of points of view among U Ukrainian population. Uh, what I mean, internally displaced people who came to Western Ukraine from combatant zone, their uh, point of view, their perception of reality make a difference with, ref uh, with people who are refugees abroad, who cross the border and now are staying in Poland, Romania, Hungary, um, Netherlands, uh, etc. And uh, on other side, we have uh, other people who are staying 
in the city's village with light combatant activities. And uh, who, these people who uh, were living under the bomb and ethics, their perception of reality make a difference. So we have many different categories of uh, population who were sensitive, who are struggled from different form of this aggression. Uh, somebody we are in light situation, other uh, living in the shelters and basements. So we have different perception of reality. And sometimes people who are living in Mariupol, they don't understand people who live also in Donetsk region, but in something uh, in some safe place where not many uh, many explosions, not many uh, attacks. They don't understand each other. We have something uh, conflicts of point of view regarding situation. And um, be, be, before our uh, webinars, I was interviewed uh, by Donbass Radio, uh, free radio of Donbass, about why people don't like uh, to evacuate from these combatant activity zones? Why they don't? Why they don't understand that it's not safe for them to stay uh, here in Donbas? And uh, we dis discussed many cases when uh, people come back uh, to the combatant activities, uh, come back from Poland, from Romania, from uh, Western Ukraine. They come back uh, to Donetsk, uh, to uh, Rubizhne, uh, Chasivyar, etc., uh, to this town who are now in this combatant zone. They, uh, so they have other perception of reality and we don't understand uh, with, uh, with them. So, Victor, hold on a second to that. Victor, that's something that we've talked about quite a bit, and I want you and Valeria to talk a little bit, explain to us psychologists in America. There are many people that decide to come back to Ukraine or go back, as you said earlier, Valeria, go back to their house or leave the refugee camps and come back. Can you explain, Valeria, why that is? Um, okay. Um... I think that there are two reasons. The first reason, uh, the, the first reason is like my um, decision to back to my home, yeah, because it's it's very it's essential. Um, I um, I felt much better when I returned to my home, when I, when I. Uh, um, have a contact with all my possessions, with I uh, took a shower in my bathroom, when I sleep in my bed, when I can prepare uh, a food in my kitchen. It's very, very, um, uh, we Ukrainians um, love our home, we love our land, we um, will do everything to uh, win in this war and return to our home because we are a big fan of our land, of our country and our home. And, but the second reason is um, some problems with money because it's challenging to spend, uh, to live abroad um, even if you have a big support from uh, your friends, from different organizations, from volunteers, it's expensive to live abroad, uh, to live abroad for some families. So I know that many of people um, made a decision to return uh, to their homes because they don't have a money, they don't have money to pay for flat, for food, um, because it's really expensive for them. But I know that um, the Ukrainian mindset, we are really a big fans of our, uh, of our land. So I think that the, the main reason uh, from our perspective. Dr. Vus, would you agree that what, what do you think are the main reasons of, because you worked in the railway station, what yeah. were the reasons people were telling you they were returning to Ukraine? 
um, I have been working uh, for several times in, in the ter terminal station and I was highly wondering why you come back to the combatant activity zones and I had communication with people and what I can say regarding their reasons. So uh, they, dis they described me, uh, in introduced me reasons. First, lack of comfort in shelters. Uh, uh, what I mean? Uh, I adopted to live in my uh, flat. This flat is comfortable for me. And now I should to live in the big hall where about 50 or 60 uh, person at, in the same time, uh, they are living here, smell, uh, extra noises, etc. It's not comfortable for me. I can live uh, here uh, one night, two nights, three nights, but not more not more that's why i prefer to stay uh, under the bomb than uh, living here i think the main reason here is the long term perspective and short term perspective because in lot in long term i could be killed or i could not be killed but here i am feeling right now it's too bad it's exhausted for me so lack of, of comfort then it's lack of uh, private spaces for them and for uh, for them or, or and or uh, for their children uh, because if you are living uh, in the big hall it's it's huge problem uh, then it's lack of sufficient social in infrastructure uh, for them uh, for uh, comfortable such social in infrastructure and else one reason is aggravation of conflicts with neighbors and relatives uh, who are staying there or who are continue to live in the combatant activities zones and um, I do uh, I not uh, I am not completely agree that the main reason why they can return to their home is the lack of money uh, for example in uh, Dutch um, re refugee centers they have enough uh, clothes enough uh, food they have all support, they have all they need, but they have too much uh, free time, too much leisure time. They don't know what we should to do and what they are doing. They are reading news, they are uh, sitting in Google about the situation and they aggravate their stress. They have too much time, uh, too much free time between uh, breakfast and lunch, between lunch and dinner, between uh, dinner and time to, to, to go to the bed. And they don't cope with this free time and this allow to uh, aggravate their aggression, their stress. And it, it is a huge challenge for them and they arrive at the decision to come back. And uh, of course, it's uh, when some people do not like to evacuate because it's uh, it's a very difficult choice. I have only two. Uh, I have only two hands. On one hand, I can take my uh, small uh, son uh, or daughter. In other uh, hands, I can put only back with my pet, with cat or with dog. But I haven't more hands to take something for myself. I have uh, for, uh, some some things for pet and for children. I have only two hands. I am not able to take more. That's why I see what we will uh, eat there, uh, what we will uh, dress on ourselves, how I can support, I can care about my pet. That's why it could be better for me. It appears better for me if I stay here and uh, I, I will stay with my things, with all possibilities to care about my children and about um, my pet. This is difficulties, uh, severity of choice. I should to take some things for me, or I should take uh, in my uh, hand my uh, daughter or my son. This uh, uh, I should to leave my pet, or I should to take uh, things for, for me. So it's better if I stay here. Uh, very difficult I think... choices. Very difficult choices you have had to make, Victor. 
as we come up, because I want to leave time for open questions, I want to ask you and Valeria both, I want to ask you something. I'm going to start with Valeria. Valeria, many of us want to know as psychologists, what can we do to help you? What can we do um, to help your organization in Ukraine as psychologists? What, what can we do? What do you need? Uh, thank you very much. Um, mm, from the first days of the full-scale invasion, we have been receiving many letters from our colleagues, especially with, from colleagues from the U.S., uh, with different suggestions and offers uh, to provide lectures, webinars, training, uh, share some materials, important materials uh, uh, for Ukrainian psychologists. And we appreciate um, these offers and this help. Um, maybe some of you want to organize uh, maybe a training for Ukrainian psychologists about crisis counseling, about trauma, about how to deal with people who lost their relatives or uh, lost their property. Um, maybe you can share some materials. I don't know. You can... Con you can um, Help us with money on our website. We have a page um, and you can send us donations for Ukrainian psychologists. Um, maybe if you have some ideas how you can help us, please write us uh, via email and we will happy to receive um, some news from you and maybe uh, find a way uh, how we can collaborate. And maybe um, I think that supervision uh, will be uh, very important for us because, as I mentioned, uh, our psychologists need uh, um, help also and support. And uh, our supervisions and our psychotherapists are also suffer from huge stress. Um, because we are all uh, the citizens of Ukraine. So trainings, lecture, lectures, webinars, supervision, maybe, I don't know, other type of help uh, would be very appreciated. So I'm going to ask you to put your email in the chat room, if you can, mm -hmm. um, and, the national, and the website um, link um, in our chat also. Um, so that people can contact you. I know that um, I've, I've been able to do webinars through the Mental Wellness Society um, for Ukrainian psychologists and, and also um, workers in refugee centers, as well as mothers and children. And I know that we've had one specifically for caregivers. Dr. Myers done a training program, a protocol that's available to you all also. I know that I've had wonderful outreach from psychologists in America who speak Ukrainian. And I think that's something that you, you do need, right? More Ukrainian speakers that can help psychologists who might speak Ukrainian. Yeah, it would be great. Yes. Okay, oh, thank you for adding everybody. It's in the chat room. If you want to take, um, please look at the email that we've got right now. I'm gonna ask Victor, what are you seeing on the ground? Tell us what we can do for you, what American psychologists can do. Many of us are trauma specialists and crisis specialists. In addition to this request from Dr. Valeria, uh, I agree it's, uh, it's uh, highly useful for us and uh, it's, uh, we, we need this so support in order to increase our capacities, our abilities to deal with trauma. In addition to this, I would like to add, uh, 
we would be highly help, uh, uh, grateful for you if you join some uh, initiatives that were established by Dr. Uh, Abraham and uh, us um, regarding bridging hearts. We would like to, uh, provide, to organize something like horizontal diplomacy, uh, so, so emotional support to Ukrainian, connect, uh, you, you connect um, some people uh, abroad, with, uh, some civilians abroad with civilians from Ukraine in order to uh, provide emotional support. I don't mean regarding money, uh, but uh, I mean all this emotional support to each other. It's like to create a bridge between hearts of Ukrainian and be between hearts of the some uh, people who live abroad. At the same time, uh, I would like to establish the same uh, between professionals. Ukrainian professionals and international professionals. It's extremely important for us in order to integrate this, our experience, our possibilities. We have many issues regarding uh, English, uh, regarding style, uh, academic writing, etc. It could be, uh, so we need this cooperation between, we need to create this international team to share this experience and to deal, to um, attract attention. Uh, so we would be help, helpful if um, we can organize some uh, research, international research team, international research project with this. If we have common publication, if we have discussion between uh, each other regarding definitions and terms, because, because we have many differences in the, between this, we need to uh, connect all of these dots to, uh, together in order to uh, provide also uh, our professional experience and our research experience uh, according to the international standard. So this two initi initiatives would be highly useful. And my dream is to organize something like National Library on Mental Health in order to provide people with uh, trustable, understandable information regarding issues of mental health. Why? Because we have many information in internet, but uh, we have mistrust to this. It's like a, a mix, mix of different. We need to have one uh, reliable and uh, trustable resource for this. Reliable, a reliable source. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I, I want to say, um, Dr. Jennifer Duran, my friend and colleague in Connecticut, it put in the chat box a wonderful resource. It's a six hour program on first aid for um, PTSD and trauma. And so that's in the chat room right now. Um, it's a wonderful resource. We also have resources from the Mental Wellness Society. We have our videos that are up on YouTube um, that you can have access to. Um, from the training programs that we've done for caregivers, um, support workers, and also refugees, um, parents is one I did. I have another one coming up in another week or so also. And I know we have many people that want to help and have questions. So I'm going to, because we're coming up at one o'clock, I want to open it up for questions from our audience today in America. So if you can, can you write your question in the chat box for our panelists, for Dr. Abraham, Gerard Meyer, Dr. Vos, and Dr. Polly? And we'd love to just be able to chance, uh, we will have the chance to answer your questions right now. Um, if you have any questions. I'm, I am, you know, I know all of us, before I see a question, all of us are very concerned about women and children in Ukraine right now. Because um, this is such a terrible situation. I know it's highly dependent upon which part of Ukraine you are in. Uh, what, what kind of help um, do, do your colleagues need in those areas that have been particularly hit hard um, by atrocities? Valeria, do you want to answer that one? Yes, thank you. <clears throat> yes, I can. Uh, in first days, uh, we were actively focused on uh, sharing and communicating self protocols uh, to prevent panic and high level uh, of anxiety with special attention to children. Uh, for example, how to talk about the war, 
how to support children or parents who are deployed, how to prepare a child for forced relocation, and even what game um, to play the children in a bomb shelter. And we have, um, we, I think that we have enough materials about it. Um, and we keep doing uh, this activity. Uh, we also conducted the uh, webinars and leaflets for parents, uh, and we pay attention to children with special needs and disabilities. And I think maybe we need more information for um, for these parents and these children. Maybe you can help us with it. Um, I know that some psychologists uh, work in uh, the centers for refugees uh, and internally displaced people and in shelters with children. Um, and I know that some psychologists uh, who are volunteers from the US and Canada, Canada they um, try to work with children online. Um, um, I know that uh, we, uh, we, our psychologists uh, created a guidelines for pregnant women, and um, I think that it's a very vulnerable community um, uh, because um, the situation is very hard, nervous, and maybe you know that in first days uh, many people gave birth in the bomb shelters without medical assistance. Uh, so maybe if you have some materials for uh, pregnant women, it would be great and very useful for us. Um, we also provide support for victims uh, of atrocities and uh, women who, um, who, um, are, uh, who are victims of uh, sexual abuse. And uh, it's a very hot topic uh, now in Ukraine because, unfortunately, um, it's a big problem. And we try to um, uh, to involve in uh, emergency team psychologists who have enough skills and uh, are well educated for on this topic. And maybe if you have some training. Uh, about sexual abuse or about uh, physical violence, it would be uh, very important for us and it would be very uh, useful also. Um, so we try to uh, help and cover off all the topics, but we need maybe more information about pregnant women, uh, maybe some trainings uh, about sexual violence and physical violence, um, so, and maybe um, some information uh, about stress and how to help uh, children with special needs and parents with children who have children with special needs and disabilities. That's great. Oh, thank you. And I just want to say we're going to have a replay of this very special video. Um, and you can check it on our Facebook events pages. There's the link. And I'm also going to try to send out um, an email via the same uh, platforms I did for this webinar, uh, putting together our resources that were discussed here today, including the resources from the Mental Wellness Society, the, um, the, the program that the protocol that Dr. Meyer um, has created, um, the field care protocol, which is excellent. Uh, I, before we leave, I just want to make sure we have any questions um, from the audience today. I know that there were some many concerns, so I want to have this opportunity to ask people to ask our wonderful um, panelists for any questions. I know there are a lot of offers of, of help and webinars, which is great. It's really heartwarming. Um, there it is, uh, Bob Dwetsch. I want you to be aware of a website with translations in Ukrainian, English, Romanian, German, and Russian. Um, and he, there's a website, and he's going to put that on there. Um, you can contact Dr. Bob Deutsch at gmail.com. And here's from Mike Yankovic. 
is a psychologist in sexual trauma. We'd be glad to consult with anyone. Feel free to contact me at drmikejy at gmail.com. I want to just, before we go, I want to ask Dr. Meyer um, for some insights and anything you want to add today before we leave. I think we got a very interesting offer here, independently <clears throat> of all the specialists who can help with the trauma of children or, or women uh, with sexual abuse, PTSD, and so on. But we got a very interesting offer, uh, which was done by uh, blah, 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 Claudia Raniki, who said she wants to offer a webinar to therapists uh, on uh, typing method that could be good, but also the art therapy. We had an offer by Chris uh, who proposed art therapy. That could be very interesting. And that, that's the idea of the Mental Wellness Society to have different specialists of different fields. Uh, and the art therapy could be very interesting in that situation. Now, uh, when we spoke about why many people are coming back, uh, I have another theory. The theory is the following. Number one, you completely go the down, down spiral when you feel you have no choice. The key to resilience is to feel you have a choice. So having the choice to return home is already a way to survive because you have a choice. And when you are in the shelter with thousands of people, we have no choice. You, you just follow like a sheep, everybody else. And that affects uh, the, um, that affect the locus of control because you lose that way your internal locus of control. And you shift slowly to an external locus of control with no internal locus of control. That is the beginning of the depression and burnout. Another element, I think some people want to come back because they could not live with the guilt that the other have been killed and they survive. I think for the people who escape, they don't want to feel in regard of their family, their friend, their countrymen as a traitor, because if they escape, they are a traitor. But if they come and help, they are one of them. And then they have the feeling of belonging, belonging to a group, not to be isolated. So I think we can have some elements here to explain why they come back. Okay, it's dangerous, but it's a choice they made because they could not live without making the choice to help other people. Another one is that the survival element, very important, is simply, uh, to make an act of goodness per day. If you make an act of goodness for others that you don't even know, it's a way to help you to survive. And definitely helping others to doing something is a very important element for your own survival. And I think if you take all that mixed, it explains a lot of that situation. I think I want to thank everybody because uh, all your colleagues, Dr. Kelly of the American Psychology Society are coming with very good proposal. I think uh, Victor is proposing to help in Ukrainian uh, with, Vic I mean, Victor Lugonovic. Uh, I'm saying with Victor, we have a plan to make help the same way um, individual to individuals uh, in America, and in Ukraine, speaking Ukrainian. I think we need to do also one-on-one -on -one for professional because it will be very helpful, not just for professional reason, but for social and human reason. So that we can organize, we have the tool, we have different elements and not to forget that we have the app that we can give to both people on both sides to make sure that they don't get overstressed by the situation of their now friend that they want to help. Because it's very difficult emotionally when you are in the comfort of your home and you know that your friend 
is uh, in very precarious situation. So we can, I think we got good ideas today. Uh, I want to thank everybody for all the proposals, a good question. Uh, I think it was a very positive meeting and I think we should have another one. Uh, maybe what in a month or uh, something yeah, we like need that. To check back but with Dr. Polly and Dr. Vos. That would be a wonderful idea. And I want to just address Helen Barron. Thank you about the about play therapy. Yes, um, we have a list of resources, including deep play for children and movement for children that we've provided to Victor. And we'll make sure that Dr. Polly also gets that. It's coordinating everything together, which is Victor's dream to have this resource library right now. And um, that is an excellent question. And I hope we can meet again in a month I would love to circle back with Dr. Polly and Dr. Vos and see how they're doing. Hopefully that things will be a lot better. I want to thank everyone for joining us today. Dr. Meyer, Dr. Polly, uh, Dr. Vos, and thank I'm, you to the Connecticut Psychological Association. Dr. Mayer, please. I will, I will ask everybody to type your email address because we will send you all what was in the chat to all of you. So this way you don't have to go through that. Uh, you put your email address and we will send you uh, the result of the chat. In addition oh, to the great. link, in addition to the link to, to share uh, the meeting of today. So you don't, you, you don't need to, to have any problem to do that. Thank you so much for everybody. Thank yes, you, everyone right Dr. There. Kelly, for yeah, your great please. work. Well, thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Polly, and thank you, Dr. Vos, for joining us from Ukraine today. We, at one point, we had more than 75 people um, here live with us today, and I know that many more people will be watching the recording, and I'm so grateful that you all could make it. Please thank you uh, again for putting your email and your resources in the chat room to share with all of us and most importantly to share with our brave colleagues in Ukraine, Dr. Polly and Dr. Vos. I want to know you to know Dr. Polly and Dr. Vos that our thoughts and prayers are with you and your families in Ukraine and of course your colleagues also in Ukraine right now. Thank you for your work. Thank you for the great humanitarian efforts. We will keep the you. event live a few more minutes for everybody to enter their email. Because if we close it, it will not give them possibility to continue. Uh, and uh, you did a great job as uh, the coordinator of that meeting, Dr. Kelly. Oh, thank you thank very you much. So much. Thank, thank, and thank you. Thank you, Dr. Mann. Thank you, Dr. Polly, for joining us and for the very I say amazing insight that you shared um, as a psychologist and as a woman of what your experience has been. And I know that um, with all the training, this situation is not something you can fully prepare for, even with all the training in the world. Um, this is a very unique crisis. Um, and, and it's one that, is really a crisis of humanity. Um, and I'm glad the, the world is, is giving you support. You deserve it. You are in, an inspiration for all of us. You are, you are an inspiration to all of us. And please- Thank you very much. Please we feel your up. support. <laughs> well, we really wanna help. We have, we have so many resources that people are sharing with you right now on this webinar and that we want to bring to you. Um, so we're going to do it. That's the best way. We're getting it down. Our, our um, motto in the Connecticut Psychological Association is we're tiny but mighty. So we are. We're small but very strong. Um, and this is the way to get things done. We're, we're going to give you these resources. Thank you. Kindly thanks. thanks. Please Thank stay you. in touch. Goodbye, Victor. Thank you. Oh, Bye. Kindly, thanks. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.